Hey folks, this is GabeSecurity.org and today I'd like to talk to you about the risk and maybe potential benefits of using an offshore exchange when it comes to crypto. Just to be clear, I am not your attorney. I am not advising anyone to use an offshore exchange. Uh, that is not what I'm doing. I'm just talking about what happens when you do that. So uh, please don't tell people Gabe told you to do this because it's not what I'm doing. I'm just talking about the risk and benefits of offshore exchanges. So I hope you've been following our series on the various security risks when it comes to crypto. And if you wanna know anything about it, we have a full playlist of videos uh, that are gonna basically give you a nice guide to getting started in this arena. Many American investors have looked towards offshore unregulated exchanges. So these of course are not subject to these same rules as those that are licensed within the United States. So what does that mean? So these exchanges can offer greater privacy, maybe it's less hassle, definitely a larger coin selection than US-based exchanges. However, you might be asking yourself, are these safe? Do the benefits outweigh the risk? So in today's video, we're gonna to try to answer some of these questions, beginning with a very basic definition of what is an offshore exchange. As the name implies, an offshore crypto exchange uh, well, to me kind of implies that it's just off the coast, which is clearly not the case, but it means that it's not within the United States. Therefore, it may not have to comply with the know your customer laws or anti-money laundering laws uh, that the United States has. So that's KYC AML. And I did take foreign corrupt practices in law school and remember that there was a lot happening uh, in that space. So if you don't have to abide by any of those rules and regulations, uh, you definitely have a little bit more uh, freedom. So typically when it comes to what benefits that brings, there's four main ones. I'm just gonna put them up on the screen. So beginning with greater selection. Now, if you're an unregulated exchange, you're gonna have just more coins to choose from. For example, Binance, which in the US is Binance.us, which is a serious distinction from Binance.com, because Binance.us has fewer than 100 coins available to choose from if you wanna buy, but Binance.com has something like 500 or more, so big difference there. The second one is less hassle. Basically, unless you're doing something like $100,000 a day, you won't even have to upload a photo of yourself if you're using an offshore exchange. So if you are able to use an offshore exchange for whatever reason, uh, you don't have to do anywhere near the level of verification until you get to a certain um, withdrawal limit. Third thing kind of plays into the second thing, which is greater privacy. So when it comes to um, basically people not knowing exactly what you're doing, you're gonna have more of that in an offshore exchange. Finally, you have access to more futures and options. Offshore, the sky is the limit in terms of what types of futures, options that you'll find available when it comes to making money off of your crypto. So let's dive into some of the risks when it comes to using offshore exchange. For example, location blocking. If you started to use an offshore exchange in the United States and your IP address is detected by that exchange and they don't wanna have any problems with the US government, they may just go ahead and block your location. Now, of course, a lot of people would get around something like this by using something like a VPN. So another thing they might do is pause your withdrawal. So if your withdrawals look weird and like, you know, like they shouldn't be happening the way that they're happening, uh, your withdrawals could be paused by any exchange offshore and you, you know, have no recourse in, in a sense. So a lot of offshore exchanges don't wanna be involved in money laundering, so they use algorithms to ensure that they are ensnaring, you know, the right people for money laundering. But of course, no algorithm is perfect as we've learned over the years. And that means that some innocent people are gonna get stuck too. So you could see yourself basically flagged as someone suspicious, flagged as someone doing something uh, wrong, and then you're not gonna be able to get your money out. So typically what might happen in this is if you're ensnared is you will have to come clean. You have to say, I'm an American citizen. I'm not using this in the right way. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I, I don't live there. I don't have an account there. So this is my problem. And if that's the case, um, any gains you had, you probably will not be able to realize, um, but you will typically get your lost deposit back. Um, now, typically, because the next problem is lost deposits. In some cases, you won't be able to really properly identify who you are, verify that you're the person having it, or you might just be in an exchange that's just a straight up scam. And if that's the case, you're just gonna lose your deposit. So maybe you thought, okay, the worst case scenario, I won't make any money, but at least I'll get my money back. But what if you don't even get your money back? That is definitely a particular concern when it comes to offshore exchanges. In fact, even extremely reputable exchanges that are offshore 
I've had issues where customers say that their accounts have been frozen, that they can't get their money out, and they say, hey, you know, like this is a supposedly well-known uh, exchange, uh, but it's offshore, and what can people do about it? They're not regulated, they're not licensed in the United States, so that long arm of the law uh, doesn't really go beyond uh, the United States borders in this particular case. Don't get me wrong, the United States loves going in to other places and, and, and using its legal uh, power uh, in a sense, but not when it comes to people's individual crypto accounts. So at this point, maybe you're thinking about the benefits versus the risk. So briefly, I'll just talk about you know some of those benefits of like, yes, you may have access to more coins. They're typically not gonna be the most popular coins, the biggest coins out there. Uh, they're not gonna be as regulated as things you're gonna get in a regulated exchange in the United States where people's identities have been verified, people know who's doing what. Um, there's just a lot more bureaucracy, if you will. Um, now, for a lot of people, that's the uh, the allure of crypto is the fact that it's not regulated like a bank. Um, as I've mentioned many times before, I'm pretty risk averse. That's not the way I live my life, but maybe that's why I'm poor. So um, maybe folks can, you know, just keep that in mind as they're going forward. Another point to that is, you know, I am a guy on the internet. Um, I still do try to have some privacy, and I know that I'm going to get you know a lot of privacy when it comes to the rules regarding holding on to my data for U.S. licensed exchanges versus those that are not uh, in the United States. Now, if you want to do crypto futures, that's something you're going to have to do in another place. That is an offshore exchange. That is, you should be somewhere else when you're doing crypto futures. That's something you cannot do anywhere in the United States. But if you want to do crypto options, you have CME Group, you have TD Ameritrade, you have Ledger X. Um, options can be had within the United States. You do not need to go abroad uh, in order to conduct those types of operations. But that is something uh, we, we should be clear about. Overall, most crypto investors can do most of what they want to do here in the United States, maybe with the you know, smaller selection of coins, but you do have access to most of those uh, elements uh, with license exchanges. Um, if you want to go abroad, just be sure to check out the risk that we talked about today. So wrapping up, the United States is the premier financial capital of the world for a reason. I mean, yeah, London's got a bit, Hong Kong's got a bit, Singapore's got a bit, but really it's down to New York, it's down to San Francisco, it's down to Chicago. Like This is where things are happening. Now, uh, that being said, the reason we are this way is because of our regulations, our laws, the fact that people believe in the United States. Um, if you don't want to be involved in, with all that bureaucracy and all these laws and regulations, you're right. Other offshore exchanges are going to be a lot more free, wheeling and dealing, a little more uh, open, um, but you're not going to get any of the protections that you get within the United States. So that's something to keep in mind. So thanks for checking out today's video. If you appreciated it, please give us a comment below. Maybe, you know, subscribe to our channel, uh, give us a like at the very least. We would very much appreciate it. Uh, we're trying to keep you safe in the physical and digital sphere. My name is Gabe. This is security.org. Be secure.